of the distribution of data. So we'll come back to mean, median, and mode. Now, uh, those are three averages. Now I want to go over to this next sheet. Two more sheets for this video, still talking about averages, typical values. Now I want to talk about a weighted mean, a weighted mean. Weighted, what does that mean? Oh, there's some values that occur uh, many times, and so instead of lift, listing them all out, you might have your data set up this way. We had 115 for our test scores, 225s, 426s. So how do you calculate a mean from this? Well, you could just go ahead and list the 26 four times, list the 27 four times, right? And then at, um, take the average function. But you don't really need to do that. We can do weight times score. So I'm going to highlight this whole range. Why don't I do it this way? Make this a little bit bigger. Ooh. Um, in 2007, you can uh, click here and then change the uh, whatever size you want. I'm going to change it to 25. All right, so I have the whole range highlighted in the active cell at the top equals one cell to my left times two cell to my left, both relative cell references, and then hold control and tap enter. That populates all the cells with your formulas. If you don't believe it, go down to the last cell and hit F2. All right, so we have all of our uh, weights times scores, then we add those up, Alt equals, and then we need to add the weights. I'm going to Alt equals, make sure that it got it right, and then tab. So now we have weight times score added up and our weights all added up. And now we can go ahead and calculate our, our uh, weighted mean here, our weighted mean for uh, scores. That should be test scores equals, and I'm going to have to scroll over here and get the uh, total. And you can see the formula evolving up here. Divide by symbol and then that. I'm going to hit tab. So that is our weighted mean. Now I also have the uh, data values all listed over here. So you can see if we calculated the average of this, just to prove to ourselves that the weighted mean does work. If I did all that and then hit enter, you can see we get the same value. So weighted mean, weighted mean up here, if the values occur more than once, then you may want to use this model. Now I also want to talk about geometric mean, and I'm actually going to go over to the PowerPoints and uh, take a look here. This topic is not in our uh, textbook. I don't know why they left it out. They actually, it's actually quite an amazing textbook, but this is an important uh, average used in finance a lot. but. Anytime there are percentages, ratios, indexes, or growth rates, that's when you might want to use the geometric mean. So geometric mean will always be less or equal to never more than the arithmetic mean. Now we can get different answers because we're dealing with in, uh, decimals, in particular numbers usually between 0 and 1. Now let's go to uh, the slide here, geometric mean. This is how we're going to calculate. We're going to have a bunch of stock percentage increases, and we want to calculate the average, right? Real common. Now, a lot of times in finance, they do use um, the arithmetic mean. Statistics are always, you know, our, our best guess. But if you're, uh, you want the most accurate value for decimals, in particular percentage changes, then this is what you want to use, geometric, percent, uh, geometric mean percentage. You take the uh, nth root, so if you have 10 values, the 10th root of all of your percentage increases. Oh, but your percentage increases have to be 1 plus whatever the percentage, or not necessarily increase, it could be change, and then you subtract 1. Let's look at a simple example here. You had salary in year one, salary in year two. So you had a 5% increase and then a 15% increase. You take, there's two of them, right? So you take the uh, second root, 1 plus the 5%, 1 plus the 15%. There you go. You take the second root of it. You get that number, but you have to subtract to get rid of the 1. And then your 0 0.09886 is the most accurate type of average we could get for these percentages. Now let's look at an, uh, to verify that this geometric mean is more accurate. Hey, if you had 41,000 and the first year you got a 5% increase, there it is. 
You multiply those two, you get that. The second year you take the amount, that's the original amount plus this, times 15%, and you get that. You add them all up, boom, there it is. Now let's do it with the geometric mean. You take 41,000 times, there's our geo mean, we get that. Then we have to use that method, put it down here, multiply it by that same. Notice they're the same each year because it's an average we're going to use for each, each year the same number. And boom, you get that amount. When you add them together, oh, you get the same exact number. Now a lot of times in finance, uh, they just do the arithmetic mean and uh, it gives you a, a good estimate. But watch what happens here. If you add 5% to 15% and divide by 2, which is a arithmetic mean, you get 10%. 41 times 10%, boom, there you go. Add, add these two together, put that there. That times 10% is that. When you add them up, you get a slightly bigger number. Now, here's another use for geometric mean, slightly different. If you know the value at the end of all the periods and the value at the begin, which a lot of times you do, uh, you take the nth root, uh, divide the two, take the nth root of the number of periods and subtract one. Let's see an example in the PowerPoints and then we'll go over to Excel and we'll do an example of both of these. Total number of females enrolled in American colleges increased from 75,000, that's the begin number, in 1992 to 35,000 in 2000. That is a geometric mean rate of increase of 1.27%. Uh, Notice we don't have all the data points, just the begin and the end. We do know the number of periods, right? 2000 minus 1992, 8. So we divide begin, um, the end value over the begin value. Roop, take the eighth root of that minus 1 and that's what you get. Let's go over to... Excel and see uh, a stock example. Here we got some uh, percentage increases. This, this looks like from the uh, go go 90s, the late 90s when all the stocks were going up a lot. Uh, the first thing is when you're calculating the GO mean, you gotta, you can't use these values, you gotta do one plus. So I'm gonna highlight all the cells and in the top active cell, the light colored cell, I'm gonna say equals one plus the relative cell reference one to my left. Hold Control and tap Enter. That populates all the cells. You can verify that one there. Now we have our values. We need to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So actually, uh, I'm going to do count right here. I didn't set this one up very well. But count, and then I'll use count. That way we don't have to do it in the middle of our formula over here. I'm going to count all these values. And then tab. Okay, so there's nine of them. So here's our formula. Oh, but wait a second. How do you take the ninth root? Because remember, we need to multiply these. And after we get the product of all those, we need to take the ninth root. Well, since uh, algebra is a prereq for this class, you all remember it's exponent 1 divided by 9. So let's multiply all those values together over there. I'm going to use the products function. Whoa! Instead of sum, there's a product. Yeah, because product just means multiply. How convenient is that? I wouldn't want to have to type all those individual cell references and multiplication symbols. So product and then shift 6 is caret and you gotta go in parentheses in parentheses 1 divided by and then I'm gonna click on that cell right there close parentheses now this will give us 1 plus whatever the thing is so I need to hit the F2 key and subtract 1. Now why can we just subtract 1 without putting parentheses around those? Because the order of operations says everything in the parentheses, then the exponent, so we can just minus 1 because that's always going to be done last here. And there it is. 0.1335. That is the average, that is the best average if you're looking at stock or whatever per percentage change or decimal change or rate of change, geo mean is uh, going to be the most accurate. Now sometimes they can be ex uh, exactly the same or very, very close. Now there's a function in Excel called geo mean equals geo mean. You simply need to get your uh, values. 
close parentheses. It's sort of like um, the sum and the average and the product functions. You just put the values in there. Close parentheses. Ah, but when we control enter, it gives us that same thing. So of course we have to subtract one. Oh, <laughs> that's a lot easier than that formula right there. But that shows you the math of how we did it. Now, what if we took the arithmetic mean equals average of those same data values? Actually, no. These ones right here for the arithmetic mean are average. And we get a slightly higher value. And the mean will always be greater than or equal to, in our case it is greater than, but greater than or equal to that. Now one other just awesome use for GO mean, and we're not going to use the geometric function. Uh, here it is, we have, this is Whole Foods stock in 1992 and then in 2005. By the way, this is 2009. The uh, year I'm shooting this video, uh, Whole Foods stock has uh, plummeted since then in the last four years. Uh, and this is split adjusted. All right, the first thing we need to do is subtract our two, our two years to figure out the number of periods. Remember the example in the PowerPoints was uh, female enrollment between uh, uh, two years, right? And then we could calculate the uh, geometric average, ge geometric mean. So the number of periods for us for this stock value example, 13. Now we come over here and our um, formula is going to be in parentheses because we got to divide. We're going to take the end value divided by the begin value. Now we had to put the this division in parentheses because division is done after exponents and the exponent has to be done on on after this is calculated. So now exponent open parentheses and 1 divided by our 13 close parentheses now, if we hit Control Enter, we'll have our same problem. We have the 1, so we have to subtract our 1. And no way, over that period, this was a pretty darn good investment. Ah, let's prove it to ourselves. Uh, we can, well, there's a simple formula to go for, uh, and by the way, the geometric, oh, the, there's a simple formula where we could take our begin value and multiply it times 1 times our geo mean raised to the 13th power and we'll go from this to here. So to check it equals 1 plus our whatever our geo mean is a caret which is raised to the, that's the shift 6 raised to the 13 and actually I forgot we need to have our begin value here. Boy I wish I had been smart enough to invest in 92 and to go all the way to there. Uh, and then hit enter. Oh, and look at that. We just proved that in fact this is uh, the most accurate type of average, a geo mean, because we can get from here to there using our geometric average. Now we have one other type of value, and by the way, for the class on the test, I am not really going to test you on geo mean, just it's not in our textbook. Uh, I wish that included in there, but for some of you that uh, are going to go on to finance and stuff like that, you can see how important this type of average is. Let's go over to trend mean. This is